welcome to our novena of Our Lady of Perpetual Help, prayed on your behalf here at St. Pat's and prayed with you in your home. We gather together in the name of God, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. So we come together and continue our journey during the month of November, the month of the Holy Souls. We remember our needs. We remember especially the times when the graces for which we want to give thanks. And we place all our needs before Mary as our mother of perpetual help. So I invite you to pray together the Hail Holy Queen, and then we will go to our little yellow novena booklets and continue there. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve, to you do we send up our sighs mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, O most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our hour of exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. So we draw to mind the many, many ways in which we have been blessed through Mary's powerful intercession. And for the gifts that we have received, let us give thanks in a moment of silent, personal prayer. Perhaps at this time we could remember to Give thanks to God for the grace of good health, for those that have been ill and are frail, their recovery. We give thanks to God for the people in our lives, those who care for us, those who journey with us, those who are neighbours to us. Let's pray for them. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Let's pray for our needs, for those people who have asked us to pray for them. With great confidence, we place them before Mary as our Mother of Perpetual Help. You may remember the beautiful prayer, the Memorare, in which we have that confidence in Mary. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known in any age anyone who fled to thy care and protection was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother, to you do I come, before you I stand, sinful and sorrowful, O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but graciously hear and grant them. Amen. We take our little booklets and pray together with the responses. As we gather together, we have great confidence that Mary will hear and grant our prayers. The little response, loving mother, pray for us that we may love God above all things and do his will every day. Loving Mother, pray for us, that we may come to Jesus for help in our needs when we are heavily burdened. Loving Mother, pray for us, that we may turn to God in all our needs, confident that he will hear and grant our prayers. Loving Mother, pray for us, that we may see the Jesus and the poor, the downtrodden, the rejected. Loving Mother, pray for us, that we may see Christ and serve him in everyone we meet today. Loving Mother, pray for us, 
that we may never lose our trust in God's loving care for us. Loving Mother, pray for us. That the Eucharist, when we are able to attend, may be the centre and source of our Christian living. Loving Mother, pray for us. For those who live in despair and without meaning in their lives, Loving Mother, pray for us. That we may work for a fairer distribution of this world's resources and that our leaders may be attentive to the needs of the poor among us. Loving Mother, pray for us. That we may live a simple lifestyle in the spirit of Jesus and Mary at Nazareth. Loving Mother, pray for us. We pray together on page 23 at the bottom. Mary, our loving Mother, you have been called and truly are the perfect Christian, the ideal disciple of the Lord. We praise and thank God for giving you to us as our model in following Jesus. Pray for us that by imitating your example, we may grow more like our divine Lord. Help us to become the kind of Christians he is calling us to be in our country today. Mary, help of Christians, pray for us. O Mother of Perpetual Help, with the greatest confidence we come to you. You know how much your Son desires to share with us the grace of his redemption. We ask you to continue praying for us that we may obtain the graces we so greatly need. Dearest Mother, you desire our salvation so much, your Son gave you to us to be our Mother. You have chosen to call yourself Mother of Perpetual Help. We trust in your powerful intercession. We trust in your motherly love. O Mary, obtain for us the graces we ask of you. Amen. A little reading today is a reflection on Mary as the handmaid of the Lord. The handmaid was really the servant of the Lord. We pray it each day in the Angelus, I am the handmaid of the Lord. So from St. Luke's Gospel, he, in chapter 22, this is what he wrote. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. Instead, you are not to be like that. The greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. And Jesus said, I came to serve, not to be served. So Mary, in a very special way, echoes that instruction from Luke's Gospel. Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. And the servant is one who responds not because of law or commands, but responds out of love. We become deeply aware in our prayers and our union with God that we are loved unconditionally. Mary knew that. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He who is mighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. So Mary is deeply aware of that grace from God, the deep grace of her son Jesus, the grace that we ask in the Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And so for Mary, her service is a response 
no matter how humble, to the needs of one another. And that becomes the foundation of our trust in her intercession as mother of perpetual help. It's unlimited. So as disciples of Jesus, her divine son, we turn to her asking for that inspiration to be full of the grace, to be close to her divine son, to see in her the great privilege of being called a Christian, a disciple of Jesus. So let's pause just for a moment in thanksgiving, asking Mary to enter deeply into our hearts. And perhaps we could also just listen briefly to the letter of St. Paul that he wrote to the Colossians. And this is what he wrote. Whatever your task, put yourselves into it as done for the Lord and not for your masters, since you know that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You serve the Lord Christ. And that's really what gives us the inspiration to go that extra mile, to reach out to those who come to us in their needs, to be Mary's presence as we respond to them. Perhaps we could pray together the prayer for families in our little mass book there on page 26. Mary, Mother of God's people, to you we entrust the welfare of our families. Inspire our married couples to love each other faithfully. Inspire our parents to be good examples of the Christian life. Inspire our single people to know God's special plan for their lives. Inspire our youth to experience the confidence God has in them. Obtain the grace of healing for all divided and broken families. May we all find joy and fulfillment in our faith and respond to the Lord with generosity and sacrifice. Plead for us, dear Mother, for the sick and the suffering in our families, for the poor, the homeless, the unemployed, the victims of abuse and racial prejudice in our midst, for those suffering from the pandemic. May our families be communities of faith radiating the warmth of the love of Jesus to heal the wounds in our society. Let us now pray for the world. For those who do not yet believe in Christ, that they may come to know the fullness of truth. Lord, hear us. For all Christian churches, that they may become one fold under one shepherd. Lord, hear us. For those who do not come to Mass in the sacraments or are prevented in this time of pandemic, that they may better appreciate the gift that they play as Christian living. Lord, hear us. O Mary, Mother of Christ, pray with us that all who are in need may be filled with the healing, saving grace of Jesus, your Son. Amen. Let's pray for the intentions of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that the Lord will be close to him in his spiritual leadership of the family of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, 
now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may our loving God, through the intercession of Mary, bless each one of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining in this novena prayer with us. We pray for you wherever you may be, and we remember your loved ones whom we honour in this month of the Holy Souls. Eternal rest grant to them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. <laughs>